Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. Ooh. It is a podcast. It is. Yeah. And travel <laughs> Well, we're your hosts. <laughs> I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. Huh. Last I checked. Most of the time, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How are you today, Brandon? Uh, I'm pretty good. Yeah. It's a random Tuesday. The Leafs didn't play today, no, so I'm not No, so sad. you're in a much better mood than you would be if we were recording tomorrow, <sighs> I bet. <laughs> Yeah. Probably. Anyway, <laughs> let's not talk about it. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, what are you drinking this week, Brandon? This, on this random Tuesday. This, this random Tuesday, I'm drinking a nice um Empress Gin and uh, strawberry bubbly. It's purple. It is purple. It's really pretty, actually. That gin was a gift from a coworker of mine. It's it's a beautiful gin. It is. And it it's tastes really very nice. It, it tastes very good. Yeah. Hmm. I am drinking a mango neutral. Mango! <laughs> very dramatic. <laughs> yes, it was. Indeed. Um, and what nerd thing do you have this week, Brandon? Well, um, it was the NHL draft last night. Mm-hmm. And that, that made me remember the time we went and saw the coveted number one draft pick mm. this year. And, and yep. uh, stuff like that. And that was fun. And also Boo Chicago because they're Boo Chicago. a terrible organization. Boo Chicago. For reasons I won't go into, but Such, Google, Google everyone, it if you want yeah, to. Yeah, every once in a while we get serious. Look, we're not keeping, no. we're not getting serious today. No. No, um, my nerd thing, what is my nerd thing? I don't know. Um, work. <laughs> I'm just working. It's, work, work, work. It's work, May. Work. Oh, it's my student's grad this coming weekend. Super. One of their grads. They do two. They do like a one in That's... like tuxes and gowns and stuff, and then we added a cap and gown, so they do like a dinner That's and stuff. That's too too many grads. <laughs> you don't like grad, but a I... really good restaurant is catering, so I'm excited to go get food. And you're leaving. You're at a bachelor party. I'm going to a bachelor party. So I'm gonna party, go eat so this I guess food. That's kind of nerdy as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I'll hear, I'm excited to hear how it we're, goes. When we're you come gonna back. we're gonna be outstanding in our field. But up. Uh, Mm-hmm. I just hit my new tattoo when I did that. It was a poor life choice. <laughs> yeah, that's not where you want to do the drum roll. <laughs> no, that was bad. Um, it really didn't feel good. <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna eat some meat and, and drink some booze and nice. swing some golf balls. Cool. <laughs> um, and what are we talking about this week, Brandon? I don't know. What are we talking about? Oswald. This week? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the Lucky Rabbit. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. This is going to be an information one. It's probably going to be a bit of a shorter episode. But we've been saying it's the year of the rabbit. Disney's 100th. I said I was going to do some information about Oswald. And we keep putting it off and putting it off. This is the week. This is the week. This yeah, is the way. You've tied me down and you're making me do this on yes, a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, let's head to the news. Disney A News Update. All right, so the news is going to be, like, kind of haphazard because we did an episode, like, three days ago. But we do have a, another new popcorn bucket. Ooh. It is droid parts and lights up. So it, it looks it looks like a Droid Depot droid. Yeah. But, like, just random totally pieces random. thrown together. Totally That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like a, nothing matches. It's called a droid parts is what it is. Yeah. So no, anyway, I, it's cool. I, I like it. It still is not as good as the the uh, Grogu Sipper. No, but... the Grogu Sipper was great. Then the other one is we have a bunch of new merch coming soon. The latest installment in the Disney 100, the Eras series, is coming May 15th. And it's all themed around World of Color, like the, the TV show, Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. Oh. So anyway, there's going to be a bunch of new merch. Yay, new merch. And there's also some new merch for the... 40th anniversary of Star Wars Return of the Jedi. That seems like less than, or more than 40 years. That's interesting. You, some of the stuff that's hitting 30 years makes me feel real <laughs> old. That hitting 40 years doesn't feel so bad. It's just maybe how old I oh, was when okay. it came out. Like, I don't know. That's, we- that's weird. Hmm. Like, that feels right. That's good. So- okay, I'm glad, because it's not usually how it goes when we have anniversaries. No. All right, yay! Less old than I yeah. know. <laughs> All right, here's some other... We have some Walt Disney World news. So Disney updates the lawsuit against DeSantis, first of all, to note recent comments as proof of unconstitutional retaliation. 
Um, so if that's the update there, Disney has a lot of lawyers. They're, they're, they're going to win this. Like (laughs) he should probably stop talking. Honestly, it's just, it's not, it's not going to go well for him, which is kind of funny, but yeah. (laughs) Sucks, sucks to be him. And the big Uh. news that's all over about Disney world is date based Walt Disney world tickets um are dropping their reservation system so, in 2024 there's not a specific date just you know coming right so basically that just makes sense because when you buy of course. A, when you buy a date based ticket yeah it it you're reserving that date it, like I, exactly I, no i, I don't totally understand how this it. is a thing but anyway whatever yeah. um there's new merch and it has been confirmed that the um, new live action style Little Mermaid will be appearing in all parks, and of course, people have opinions on that. There's also a new Little Mermaid Barbie limited edition oh, Barbie. Oh, that's kind of cool. I think it's official Barbie, but it's like the live action version. Oh yeah, okay. W- looks like yeah. Hallie or whatever her name is. I had so many official Barbie. Um, like Disney princesses. I gave them all to my sister, but I, yeah, that's cool. So that makes sense that it would be officially licensed. Then. Yeah, I think, mm-hmm. so. I think it was it, anyway, it looks like a Barbie, but I was just looking up um, to see where I could find um, if we had a date on when Disney world was going to end those park reservations. Um, yeah, it just says 2024, but in oh, addition for the date base. Yeah. yeah. In addition to that, annual pass holders and cast members won't need reservations on several dates this year. Um, basically, so although we don't have which dates those are, they're now going to be called good to go dates. And essentially, it's the dates when the par- parks aren't going to be very full. Like, we're not looking at the two weeks for Christmas for this or anything, people. This again, is going to be like again, Tuesday. This is going to be a day where you could have gotten a reservation yes. the day before anyway. Exactly. So it's not. But it's making people... Or the day of, even. Yeah, like it's not probably. It, it just... It's marketing at this point. It is. And, and it's make, it's working because people are, like, freaking out excited about it. Oh, yeah. And, of course, all the Disneyland people are like, what about us? And it's like, this is... Like, I honestly think the... Because if you have a date-based ticket, like, that is doing the same thing as a reservation anyway. Yep. So, I, we've discussed before that we think that's where the compromise will be. And then everyone will be really happy because they'll say, oh, we dropped reservations. But really, it's the, you know, it's the, just they are going to keep reservations yeah. for annual pass holders, magic key holders, whatever they call yeah. them from now on. There may be some special circumstances. You're good to go days. Yeah. They want to funnel those. Totally. They love them. those annual pass holders into unbusy days. Exactly. And, and, and then they want sense. they want the the single day. Mm-hmm. people who fork over a bunch of money because they can only come when it's spring break or exactly. whatever yep. to pay a bunch of money to come on those totally. busy days. Of course they do. Disneyland is going to end up doing the same thing as Disney World does, just in a different way. Different way. They ha- they're they going to have to turn different knobs because, of yeah. course, they have a lot more annual way pass holders. More, and, yeah, yeah, totally. So. so they'll have fewer good-to-go days, but they'll still sprinkle them in and they'll make the magic key holders. I keep saying annual pass holders. Annual pass holders is Walt Disney World, and Magic Key holders is Disneyland. They're the same thing. thing. It's dumb marketing. Okay. And uh, they'll do that, and I actually do think they'll do, because Disney World has, even on days you um, you won't need a reservation after like 2 p.m. or something. I think Disneyland will do that as well, but it'll be like 4 p.m. They'll get there, yeah. 4 p.m., I could see that. So I think... I think Disneyland will do the same thing just in a different way and it'll make everyone really happy. So like you said, it's marketing, whatever it's marketing. And like, yeah. So your, your magic key holders, let's get, bring Mm -hmm, it back mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. Disneyland. They are going to be very big Disney fans and they're probably going to buy a lot of merch, but I guarantee you they spend less per day that they're in the park than, someone who's buying a single day ticket right or a and their five res- day ticket yes or and their response is always um but per year and i'm like that might be true but like say us who are not magic key holders we've said this before if you fit if we're there five days and then someone else like us comes the next five days and that whole group yeah. spent way more than you did in one year <laughs> You're, like and you're taking up you're, that spot you're capa- they're looking at per guest per day yes not mm-hmm. 
per guest per year. Exactly. So that's, of course they want to do that. It totally makes sense. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, they are a business. You can't really fault them for that and they, still be like, yay business. They, Disney is a business with a capital B. Mm-hmm. They're like your go-to definition of capitalism. Right. So yeah. And it is what I it is. I think this is going to be, I think this makes a lot of sense, and I think it is a precursor of what's going to happen in Disneyland, just in a different way. Yeah. But anyway, this is the news that made everyone really excited, so this is our news. Yay. (laughs) Yay. Main topic. (laughs) That was my yay. (laughs) What's in the bag? It's not a head. It's just content. Oh. Ah. Mm. Disney A grab bag. Oswald, did you ever watch any Oswald the Lucky Rabbit cartoons? I'm not a hundred years old, so no. <laughs> you could find them. Not like, like I literally had no idea that there was such a thing until that that random Switch game came out where he was the villain. Yeah, that was really cool. It that was, was fun. really it was like cool. The painting one. It if if only it controlled half as well as Super Mario sixty four. Like, everything about it was really cool. Yeah. But it had really terrible controls and camera. I still played it for, like, a long time. A lot longer than I should have. Just the, because I liked the concept the, the, so much. The, the theming and, like, so the good. actual gameplay was not bad. But, like, it just... It had a really... Mm. It, it failed on a fundamental level of the game controls. Mm. Yeah, I don't even really remember that. I just remember being frustrated. Yeah. That's probably why. <laughs> and I know nothing about gaming. In a... In, in a 3D platformer, the camera is so, so important. Mm, okay. And this had, like, one of the worst 3D platformer cameras I've ever seen Ooh, in a game. That's yeah, not good. One of the worst. I wonder if Oswald is going to show up in Disney Dreamlight Valley. He should. He really should. They're doing... Well, anyway, there there's a Park Star Path going on right now. It's almost over, but I, I finished it already. But, uh, yeah, it made me think because it has all this 100th stuff going on. Um, yeah, made me think of Oswald. Anyway, when I did find out about him, I, I did a little research because I like yep. to read about stuff and history and things yeah. like that, and I, I thought he was pretty cool, so He's pretty cool I'm, I am a big fan of Oswald. Yeah, and absolutely. I think, and I think they should do more with yeah. him. Yeah, oh, they're bringing him in a little bit more this year, and I think they should continue doing that. They, well, it, it lent itself really well because, of course, they do a big deal with the Chinese New Year. Yes. Or mm-hmm. Lunar New Year, I guess, mm-hmm. is, is what they call it, which makes sense totally. um and it's the year of the rabbit mm-hmm. in, in the chinese zodiac and that totally and we were even talking plays about right like, into everything what rabbit know? are they going to use and we named a whole bunch of them and then oswald was their main one and we're like that yeah. is brilliant roger roger rabbit should have been should have been more of a focus bit yeah. more. but it works really well because the focus for that is in dca where is the only place you could find oswald before when he did start showing up or Oswald merch or anything. Um, it lends itself really well to the time period of DCA. And now for the 100th anniversary, it all just kind of meshed really well together. Here, here's a tangent for you. Okay, I like tangents. <laughs> oh, no? Okay, I don't like tangents. Um, so, yeah, Year of the Rabbit, not Oswald specifically, but they should have, they, they could have a meet and greet with Floor right now. Floor. Year, year, year of the Rabbit. It, it, it would work good? No? Okay. Never mind. Anyway. Ow. <laughs> Floor. Mm. He is a rabbit. She? He? I think the voice was female, but uh, I don't know that their gender mattered. <laughs> nope. They? <laughs> Hmm. Okay, let's go back to Oswald right now, so I don't have to hit you again. Hmm. Um, okay, so Oswald was created in 1927, and he appeared from 1927 all the way into the like, well, the, the 30s, but his ownership was taken in 1928, so he only was there for a year. In 2003, Buena Vista Games pitched the video game idea. Epic Mickey is what it was called. Yes. And that was the first time we saw Oswald in, like, modern day. 
It mirrored the abandonment by Disney and envy towards Mickey Mouse. Yeah, he was, he was the villain because he's mad at Mickey for becoming famous yeah. and stuff. And that it's like such a good plot, and there were so many good elements to that game. Uh, I'm just I'm mad that it wasn't. I still really liked it though. It I'm mad sad. that it was not good. Yeah. It was not good. It was not a good game. I still liked it. <laughs> Um, but that was the return of Oswald to Disney that like heralded in basically. So that was mm. 2003. So from 1928 oh, to 2003. Guess what? That was 20 years ago. Guess what? Yeah. So Return of the Jedi was the same age as Epic Mickey when Epic Mickey came out. Apparently. I'm not okay with this information. No, it's horrible. Let's stop. This is why math is not okay because <laughs> we think about these things. How old did Return of the Jedi feel when Epic Mickey came old. out? Old. Really super duper old. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. Okay, moving on before we think about that too much. So what was cool is when Oswald first came out in 1927, it was considered to be the first cartoon character with a distinct personality. Instead of modeling just one gag after another, Walt took inspiration from actual live-action comedians, um, especially Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Laurel and Hardy, which is why he was so successful for that year before he was taken away. Yeah, um, I guess if you're going to model yourself after someone, go for the best. That people. makes sense. Yeah, but they were doing, he's instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to like do slapstick stuff, he actually watched these comedians and just was like, I'm going to animate a funny rabbit like that. So Disney historian David Gerstein describes the difference between Mickey and Oswald. Imagine Mickey if he were a little more egotistical or fallible, or imagine Bugs Bunny if he talked the talk but wasn't as good at walking the walk. Uh, that's Oswald, apparently. I liked that, that description. That's yeah, because Bugs Bunny's kind of kind of cocky and but like I don't know, just has plot armor and pulls it off. Right. But I get. I, I've literally never seen an Oswald cartoon. So <laughs> basically, it all falls apart. Yeah. But so. it's the cockiness that was really kind of interesting. Whereas Mickey isn't that at all. So that's interesting that Oswald had a little bit more edge to him, even though he came first. Normally, you'd like work into that. The twenties were an interesting time, Krista. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> The first hit was Trolley Troubles in 1927. At that time, it was the most successful Universal cartoon to date. Yes, it was Universal at the time. And it launched a series of 26 shorts. And created because originally he was talking about like a cat, but he said there was too many cat cartoons at Universal, so especially Felix the Cat. So Universal mm. said, give me something different. And he's like, all right, I will give you a rabbit then. Yes, Felix the Cat was big. And yeah, no, like, well, think about... I don't know. You've probably never seen any Felix the Cat. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and Betty Boop. Yep. Cartoons back then had had edge mm -hmm. to them. They had edge. So I said that. Now I'm thinking of Felix the Cat and Betty Boop. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of her originally, but Felix the Cat being like, oh, no, actually, Oswald does make sense now. Thinking oh, yeah. It. So here's the drama. Are you ready for this? The drama. <laughs> In the spring of 1928... Disney traveled to New York City in hopes of negotiating a more profitable contract with his producer, Charles Mintz. But as economic problems were apparent at the time, Mintz figured Disney should settle for a 20% cut, although large turnarounds were promised if the studio's finances showed considerable growth. While most of his fellow animators left for Mintz's studio, Disney decided to quit working on the Oswald cartoons. On his long train ride home, he came up with an idea to create another character and then retain the rights to it. So it was literally after he left, losing Oswald. On the, he very famously, was on the train ride when he in, like invented Mickey. Um, he and yeah, I were Mickey's just scraps. <laughs> Insp inspired. <laughs> he and Iwerks would go on to develop a new cartoon in secret. Starring a new character, which would soon become the most successful cartoon character in film history and later became the foundation of a global entertainment empire. The first Mickey Mouse cartoon to be filmed was playing crazy in the summer of 1928, so like immediately after this, but it was produced as a silent and held back from release. The first Mickey Mouse film with synchronized soundtrack, Steamboat Willie, reached the screen that fall, became a major hit, eclipsing Oswald. Playing Crazy was later given its own synchronized soundtrack and released on March 17th, 1929. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he went in the spring to negotiate. It didn't go well. On the train ride home, he invents Mickey, starts developing it in secret. That summer, it's released. That's how fast that went. 
Yes. It also helps that there was like such a major re- revolution as the talkies. At totally. That, it was at like the point. perfect timing. Like, well, playing crazy wasn't because it was a silent film. It wasn't considered a big success. It wasn't until Steamboat Willie. So it's just he did that at the right time. Well, you just said he held it back because it wasn't. Yeah. And then it was released after. So here, uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll put this in a frame of reference of of, of modern. Okay. Times. I'm ready. I'm ready. Pay your creators. <laughs> the writers are on strike right now for a reason. <laughs> Pay your creators. It's true. Mickey's big success. Mm-hmm. One of the most famous characters yep. in the entire world. Pro- might be. Think of a mo- more famous. You, okay, you can't think of a more famous animated character. You can go to the middle of a village in Africa. And they'll know Mickey Mouse. And they'll know Mickey Mouse. That's insane. And so... Yeah. yeah. Pay your writers. Pay, pay your writers, <laughs> pay your creator. Like, uh. Yep. So, um, meanwhile, Universal maintained control of Oswald. The first one with sound was Hen Fruit in 1929. Basically, then they were playing catch up, right? In the 30s. Ooh, I like catch up mm, on yep. hot dogs. Yep. Yep. You can have some of those while you're camping at your bachelor party. <laughs> I intend to. In the 30s, Oswald shifted to have shorter ears, be cuter, rounder, white gloves on his hands. Gee. What did that look like? He adopted... Oh, boy! <laughs> um, in the live-action movie The King of Jazz in 1930, Oswald appeared in the first ever animated sequence with both sound and color. Isn't that cool? That was Oswald who did that. I had no idea. Mostly, was, he, was he the King of Jazz? Because that's don't a think he was. bit of a stretch. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. Mostly black and white, a few color shorts, appeared in a comic run as well in the 30s, Mostly disappeared after the 30s, with a few exceptions, minor cameos, including there was a Woody the Woodpecker movie in the 50s. Oswald showed up in it. I don't know. That's random. Um, And then, like we said, he showed up, first of all, in 2003 in Epic Mickey to Disney, but the trademark was not officially returned to Disney until 2006. And that is, like, now he's back with Disney, and they're kind of, like, tiptoeing around using him. Embracing him in some ways, tiptoeing in others, because... Like, Use him! <laughs> He's so cool! Well, and now especially with, like, millennials, and now even into Gen Z, this is, like, the kind of thing they like. There's a lot of issues with Gen Z. Apologies to any Gen Zs that are listening right now. Um, but they appreciate retro stuff. They do. They really do. Mo- My problem is what they consider retro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're old. I, I I honestly don't fault them for that. I make fun of them a little bit because I had better knowledge of, of things from that time period relative to mine than they do. But they appreciate it. They mm-hmm. don't they don't scoff at it like uh, our generation and especially like the younger millennials. We're oh. el- we're like significantly elder millennials. We are exennials. I think yeah. is what the phrase is. Yeah. Um. The, the the younger millennials really scoffed at anything that was like even 10 years old. Yeah, it's true. If it wasn't new and modern, it was like not okay. As an overgeneralization, yes. obviously. Well, you have to, when you're yeah. talking about generations, you, you have, have to, to talk in an overgeneralization. But that's true. They really, um, well, I mean, heck, I've never seen so much 80s and 90s clothes as it, right now. And I'm like, oh, I'm that old. <laughs> Except they, they get upset when you tell them it's 90s I know clothes, they do. Yeah. I had a student who... Mm. Uh, was who literally came and she was in like this little like a a long sleeve ribbed crop top that I think had like a like some slogan on the in the front and like baggy jeans and a choker necklace and butterfly clips and I was like oh my god you look like it's 1993 I was like I love your outfit I remember wearing something like in elementary school and she was so mad I said no you look like the 90s yeah she's like that what no she's and she was a, she's, so mad she's a so spice girl it didn't help that I then took her to all the teachers and asked what she looked like and they're all like 1994 1991 96. She was so mad. She's never worn the butterfly clip since, actually. <laughs> we we poached some stuff from like the seventies. I had bell like bottoms. That. Like, I had bell not, bottoms. It's not that. Like you have to realize that that things come in waves, and yeah. you just gotta go with it. I had bell bottoms. That's my point. Mm-hmm. Yep. But anyway, that uh, th- yes, Oswald would find some success. So bring back Oswald. Bring in more Oswald. We should have uh, 
a Disney rabbit renaissance and bring back Roger Rabbit Agreed. and and Oswald Agreed. and Thumper and Floor and and Floor and Floor cuz no spoilers no no spoilers so you and know. Floor <laughs> Just like we're going more well, recently. Okay, so what's your favorite Disney rabbit? Uh, uh, in- oh, Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit, yeah. Well, I mean, I do, actually do like Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, though. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Rabbit. Who? I mean, yours is Roger Rabbit. I'm sure. <sighs> yeah. No. It, it definitely. Actually, and you know what? I like Judy Hopps. The the rabbit from the Robin Hood movie is kind of good. Ooh, yeah, too. yeah. That was really she's, good too. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. uh spunky little kid yeah i liked her too okay here is a list of disney rabbits just from like a quick (laughs) google search are you ready for this yes okay disney rabbits the main ones that just show up again quick quick search oh well the white disney's top 10 rabbits yes okay Okay. we're doing the top 10 we're doing the top 10 rabbits just give me a minute. It's you gotta, you gotta hit visit. visit. There you go. There you go. You, All right, you, Disney's top ten rabbits. Here we go. It's your first day. It's okay. <laughs> the rabbit's name. Oh, the male, the boy rabbit. Oh, the boy from, rabbit. Is I thought Skippy. there was a girl. There rabbit. is his yeah, older okay, sister. Okay. So Skippy is number ten from Robin Hood. Terrible name. He yeah. is seven years old. He gets his birthday money, and that's when we see Robin Hood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Clover, um, is not one we know because Sophia the first, which this is like a Disney Channel animated thing. It's her best animal terrifying friend. totally um oswald the lucky rabbit number eight yeah number eight mm-hmm. the march hare okay yeah that's uh that's at he's From, the he's the rabbit at the tea party yeah, with alice he's, in wonderland he's the, yeah. um yeah the march hare is really good friends um having like doing the very merry on birthday with the mad hatter and everything like that the second best rabbit in alice in wonderland Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> number six is thumper excellent R- number five is Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. Always loved Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. Judy Hopps comes oh, in at number yes, four. Oh, yes, Judy Hopps. That's when I how said. Could, how could I forget oh, I Judy, Hopps. Judy Hopps? Yeah, you did. I, yeah, I, 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 I The White Rabbit comes in number three from Alice in Wonderland. That's an excellent one. Roger Rabbit at number two. And number one. Oh, okay. Professor Emilius Brown. You probably don't even know this, but it's actually an excellent rabbit. He's normally a human. The, but in, so this is in bed knobs and broomsticks. Every time Miss Eglantine Price gets mad, she turns him into a rabbit. This list is invalid. <laughs> so let's just move him off and then like bump Roger Rabbit to number one. Yeah, no. That, that, rabbit's number that two. could have been on the list, but it should, probably should have been number 10. How is that number one? That's I don't, garbage. I don't think it should be number one. I do think it being on the list is awesome. I think it, okay, it, Clover. It, Clover, Clover, Clover could have been. Amelia's Brown. Well, Clover could have been 10. <laughs> okay. Amelia's Brown could have been nine. Okay. And then the rest of the list can proceed as it was. Okay. And I'm okay with that. All right. I'm not mad at that. Roger Rabbit wins for sure. Some random live action <laughs> bunny. And he's only in there for a little bit. Does not cut it. <laughs> All right. We're going to do, we, Brandon, are going to do a quiz. And by we, I mean you. Okay. Number one. How well do you know the Disney Rabbits? Not super well, apparently, because I've never heard of <laughs> Professor Amelius Brown. You never watch Bed Nuts and Broomsticks? No. Oh, shit. It's awesome. In Alice in Wonderland, what is the right rabbit, white rabbit late for? Um, uh, a very important date. Correct. Number two. I'm just telling you correct. We don't, because there's more than three. Okay. Number two. What is Bambi's friend Thumper's word for falling in love? Oh, Twitter painted. Yeah. Ah, that's that easy. That is cute, right? It was Twitter painted. In the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh, what sign does Rabbit put up because of poo? Oh, dang. Uh, there is multiple choice if you don't know it off the Yeah, table. I would like to know okay. the multiple choice. I, I'll probably get it on, I hope I get it on the multiple choice. Don't feed the bear, hide your honey, stay off the vegetables, or watch out don't, for woozles. Don't feed the bear. Don't feed the bear is correct, yeah. Before she moves to Zootopia, where does Judy Hopps live? In Denland, Denland, Bunny Burrow, Hoppington or Grand Rabbits. Rabbits. <laughs> All right. I've only seen Zootopia once. Me and I too, don't... but I know the answer. <laughs> uh, hey, Grand Rabbits. 
And the answer is Bunny Burrow. Uh, I don't know how I know that, but I do. Okay. Walt Disney created this character years before Mickey Mouse. Oswald. Only... Oh, yeah, okay. What occasion is the March Hare celebrating when Alice meets him in Alice in Wonderland? Uh, it's very merry unbirthday. Correct. Of course. Oh, here's a good rabbit. Hey, it's our very it, merry unbirthday today. It, it's my very merry unbirthday too. What a small world this is. Wow. It's the next line. <laughs> what a small world. Okay. Here's a rabbit. The magician's rabbit named Alec oh. Azam in the Pixar short is willing to get to sabotage the whole show in order to get his carrot. What is the name of the Pixar short that Presto. he's in? Cre Did you get that without... Oh, no, that gets a high five. Awesome. Ooh, Bunny and his pal Ducky bring big laughs to which Pixar feature? Toy Story 4. One of the best parts of Toy Story 4, actually. The only good part of Toy Story 4. <laughs> um, Bunny... Plush Rush! <laughs> that, it was really good. Sleeping Beauty features a dance scene with Aurora and two rabbits who dance with what objects? If you need multiple choice, I've got it. No clue. Boots, tiaras, magic wands, or hats? Sleeping Beauty mm -hmm. features a dance scene. In the forest, all the animals gather stuff. Oh, it's boots. Mm -hmm. It's boots. I rem I can distinctly... Because there's two and they hop inside they, they, the boots. They're pretending to be the prince. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I, I got there in the end. Good job. <laughs> okay, and number 10. When Thumper finds himself a sweetheart, what is his true love's name? Oh, jeez. Bunnette, Miss Bunny, Jumper, or Rabatella? <laughs> Those all sound made up. Well, they were originally. <laughs> you know, I get it, but like, not not well made up. I, no. uh, I, I don't know, Jumper and Thumper. That's I... cute, but the answer is Miss Bunny. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> you know, I got all those without looking. That's sad, actually. <laughs> um, good job, Brandon. Actually, I think you did well with that. I you think got I... like eight out of ten on some of these were random. Okay, that's pretty good. Good job. I'm happy with Presto. Yeah, that's impressive. I would not have gotten that. And if I had multiple choice, I would have, but... um, What's your favorite rabbit? Is it Roger Rabbit? It's Roger Rabbit. I, I already... I, <laughs> it's Roger Rabbit. But Oswald would be very cool anyway. Oswald's cool, but he relies a little bit too much on, like, historical stuff rather than actual performance. Bring in more Oswald now. He's there's like he's a little the, bit more now. He's the Montreal Canadiens of animated characters. <laughs> Hockey reference. Yeah. Canadian, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All about the history and, and no substance. Ooh, spoken like a Leafs fan. Mm. <laughs> uh, Leafs, Leafs have neither, so... Really <laughs> <good>. <laughs> uh, anything else to add about Oswald and the rabbits? Um, no. Okay, cool. <laughs> Works for me. That means that is our show. Thank you, El Mule, who's responsible for the custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website, disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. And that is also where you can find links to our social media accounts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go drink in a field with El Mule this week. You weekend. are, actually, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet he'll bring his guitar. Maybe. I bet he'll sing a song. Maybe? He probably won't do our theme song, though. He could try. You should tell him to try. You should add some <laughs> lyrics to it. And then you should record it. And then you should like send it to me and I'll put it up on Instagram. <laughs> and YouTube. Seriously. Even if it's made up lyrics. Like, well, obviously it's made up lyrics. No, I mean like, if it's like, this is the theme song. <laughs> oh, okay, boy. oh no. Okay. We okay. fell apart. We ba fell apart. Back on track. Okay, <laughs> social <laughs> media. Mm. We're on Instagram at DisneyA.podcast. Facebook at Disney A and Twitter at Disney A Podcast. And you can... Snapchats at Nope. Oh. Um, TikTok. TikTok. No. No. You can find Disney A episodes on all of your favorite and not favorite podcast streaming platforms, as well as on our YouTube channel, Adventures A. If you know someone who might like listening to us, please be sure to recommend Disney A as well. Um, and if you've rated or reviewed our podcast, thank you. You're awesome. And if you haven't, you are less awesome, and you should be more awesome by rating and reviewing us. 
but especially if it's like a high rating. So no one can see what you have, Bren. What do you, what do you have? I'm distracting you. You are. What do you have? Uh, well, I got a bag buddy. Yeah, it's a park pals. Oh, okay. Is that what it's called? I think, or something like that. Little little clip on uh, figure. We got him in Disneyland. I I put him on my hoodie. You're wearing a Marvel hoodie right now, and you have Pua. I Pua. He's hanging on my he's my really my cute. hoodie strings. Yeah, he's really cute. Uh, we got him, and I actually was then was nervous to actually take him to the park. I didn't want him to fall off my lounge fly, so I said, "Well, he's just gonna hang around our house instead." He holds on pretty good. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I was a little nervous, but maybe then I'll bring I'll bring one of them to to try out, or I'll put him like on. I've seen him where it's like on the strap so you can see and you would feel if he like mm -hmm. fell off or something. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Very cute. Anyway, yes, you have a little Pua. I'll like take a picture and put it on Instagram at some point. <laughs> right now. Okay, sure. But this doesn't come out right now. Well, you can do it ahead Again. of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, we don't know what we're talking about next week, but we'll talk about something. Yeah, something. <laughs> So I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. And until the next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney, A. Eh? This is the theme song. <laughs>